Hello guys, how are you all, welcome back to my channel, so today we are gonna see, what if Naruto, Shikamaru and Niji time travel, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. There they sat, back to back breathing heavily. They fought once more as a team. We did it, the wars are over. A pink haired girl said. Yes, but with great loss. A blue eyed blonde replied. I know. The pink haired girl muttered as tears came to her eyes. She couldn't hold it in any longer. Sakura, we may be that last real live now. A dark haired boy began. Kakashi, the Kanoha 12, the other senseis, the dark haired boy continued on. It had been almost three months since they last saw someone they actually knew. That was when Shikamaru, Niji, Sai, and Shino were sent out to take out a base, the seven of them had been the last of the Leaf Village. Now it was just the three of them left. Everyone else had died before this. No one had the time to mourn those that had died, after all there was a war going on. The war had changed many people. Sasuke, you don't have to remind me that no one else is left. Sakura cried through tears. What do we do now? I can't even really move. I think I know of a way. The blonde boy began to say. He paused as if he was still considering his idea. What is Naruto Sasuke asked his best friend. Sasuke had teamed up with them after re-killing Orochimaru. The three of them had teamed up in the end to fight off Madara. Abito had died the same day as Kakashi did. I have talked to Kurama, he knows of a way we can go back in time. Before all of this, we can stop a lot of things from happening. We could save everyone. We wouldn't have our full power, just our knowledge of this time, and any jutsus we know. We just have to relearn them, and build up our body strength and stamina. Naruto explained. Really we can go back? Can we save everyone? Sakura asked hopefully. We can, Kurama doesn't know how far back we will go, but far enough that we can stop a lot of this from happening. Naruto replied. Let's do it Sasuke suddenly said. It's a chance for us to start over and save everyone. I didn't care much for everyone else, but they are important. Maybe this time around I can actually make a bond with the others. I am in too how does it work Sakura asked, turning to Naruto. Kurama will do it, just add your chakra in with mine. Naruto answered. Both nodded in understanding, before they placed a hand on his shoulder. A few minutes later there was a flash of light and the three friends blacked out. Naruto's pov. Naruto a familiar voice I hadn't heard in a long time shouted. I opened my eyes, and just in time for me to see an eraser coming at me. I caught it in mid-air before it could hit me, why was this eraser being thrown at me? Aruka I called out loud, slightly confused. I almost jumped in surprise when I heard laughter from around me. I was in the academy. It worked. They worked. I made it back before I became a genin, but how far back? Naruto, why were you sleeping? This is the third time this week. Aruka asked with a sigh. I had to really fight the urge to hug him. Aruka had died not long after Kakashi. Well um dot didn't sleep well last night. I had a nightmare dot that sounded like a good excuse to me. Fine, I will let it go. I don't want you falling asleep in my class, anymore. Aruka replied as he turned back to the board to continue on with the lesson. As soon as Aruka turned his back, I searched the room. Did Sakura and Sasuke make it back too? I looked towards Sasuke's usual spot in the academy. There he was, staring out the window. I wonder if it's actually him from the future. Sasuke turned to look at me, as if he knew I was watching him. Once his eyes met mine he smirked, and then signaled me. It was him the three of us made up our own signals during the war. I quickly signed back, before turning away from him to check if Sakura had made it back too. It also helped that since we had been shinobi for a few years, you can easily pick up if someone is watching you. Just like with Sasuke, she was sitting in her usual seat next to Ino not very far from Sasuke. Sakura didn't look at me at all, but a few minutes later she turned towards me quickly, while Aruka's back was turned. She signed in my direction. I signed back when she turned her head to look at me again a few minutes later. Good, we were all here, now class just needs to end. We had a lot of planning to do. I really needed to find out what the date was. Luckily Aruka always puts it on the board every day. I looked back to the board to find the date, where Aruka always had it. So it's a week before our genin exam. We could work with that, but once we start working with Kakashi, we will have to be more careful about what we show. Or we could always freak him out a little Naruto held in a laugh. That sure sounded like a fun idea. It wasn't much longer for class to end. Before I left I made sure to give Aruka a quick hug. I couldn't hold it any longer. Hopefully I could control it when it came to everyone else. I did pretty well during class without shouting in joy and hugging everyone in sight. I met up with Sakura and Sasuke soon after at the tree in front of the academy. Next to the swing, I always liked it. So what's the plan Dobe Sasuke asked as soon as I was close enough to hear. I should have known. I am going to be stuck with that name forever. Stupid nonsense, he knows I am way stronger than him. Knock it off you two, I don't want to listen to you guys fighting. 
I really don't have the patience to deal with the two of you. Sakura sighed, she knew how they could get. I quickly pushed out my chakra to make sure no one would overhear our conversation before finally answering Sasuke's question. So we have a whole week before our genin exams. Right now is the easiest time for us to train without raising any suspicion. So we can train after class and during the weekend. We have to get as strong as we can before the Chunin exams. That is our first big problem I explained to them. Sure Wave plays a big part too, but not as big as the Chunin exams. Okay, that sounds like a pretty good plan for now, we can always add details later. So let's go start that training. Sasuke declared. Sasuke started to walk away from them and head towards the nearest training grounds. We probably should look for a training ground that no one uses, like at all. We will cause too much attention if we train in training grounds that are more commonly used. Sakura suggested. We both agreed with her, we definitely did not want to gain any attention. At least not yet. The three of us then set out to find an unoccupied training ground. No one's pov. The three time travelers spent most of the week training and going over plans for the future of Konoha. The genin exams went much the same as before, even dealing with Mizuki. Though this time Naruto copied down other things that the three of them could use. Team 7 were now sitting in the classroom waiting for Kakashi. Though this time they were well ready for their tardy sensei. So Kakashi will be here in what, like two hours Sakura asked. Yeah, so we are going to have fun with this right Naruto asked his two best friends. Oh we are. Otherwise we would have to wait until the wave mission for anything exciting to happen. At this point everything will be boring, tell them. Sasuke replied. Naruto, I am so glad you got that stick out of Sasuke. Now he actually interacts with the world. Sakura laughed at her own words. Shut up. Back then all of you just annoyed me. Sasuke grumbled. Look what you did Sakura. You are turning him back to being a brooding nonsense. Naruto replied with a snicker. Sasuke grumbled again, you two are getting when we spar. Sure Sasuke Sakura stopped in her sentence when the door opened to show Kakashi's gravity defying silver hair. The three of them held the urge to hug him, well two out of three. Sasuke doesn't really hug anyone. After all, Kakashi was like their big brother parental guardian. Sakura was chewing on her bottom lip to hold herself back. The other two weren't faring much better. Meet me on the roof and with a puff of smoke he was gone. Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura sat across from Kakashi, silently observing each other. Okay, why don't we get to know each other, a bit Kakashi said after looking each of them over. You go first sensei, that way we can have an example. Sakura replied. After all they have to somewhat play along. Alright, my name is Kakashi Haddock. I have some likes and dislikes. A few hobbies. My dream. Well, I had one the other day. The three soon to be Jenin nodded. They already knew what he was going to say. Kakashi pointed to Sakura, Pinky, your turn. Okiyam Sakura Haruno. I like my friends and family, cooking, healing people, training, and books. I dislike guys who judge others before they know them. My hobbies are training, healing, cooking, and reading. My dream is to become the best medic ninja in the world, even better than Tsunade of the Salmon. And to help my friends with their dreams. Bakashi was definitely surprised with her introduction, none of it matched her academy profile. Plus her hair was now shorter, and she was wearing more suitable ninja clothes. Alright, the dark-haired one, your turn. I am Sasuke Che. I like my friends and family, training, tomatoes, reading, and shogi. I dislike people who can't see the difference between a kunai and a scroll. My hobbies are training, reading, and shogi. My dream is to become an Anbu captain and be one of the strongest ninja in the world. This added even more confusion to Kakashi. Sasuke's academy profile didn't match this introduction either. It said he wanted to get revenge on his brother. Okay, now for you blondie. Naruto smiled. I am Naruto Uzumaki. I like my friends and those I consider family, training, Raymond, sealing, the village, food, training, reading, and protecting others. I dislike a certain dude that ruined everything. My hobbies are training, creating seals, writing, reading other things I can't really think of at the moment. My dream is to always protect my precious people no matter what and always be there for them. Even if it puts my life and dreams behind theirs. I also want to become the strongest Hokage there ever lived. So that I will be able to protect my precious people and everyone that lives in the village even if they hate me. I want to become one of the strongest shinobi in the entire shinobi world. Also that none of my precious people have to suffer. There was a long silence after Naruto's introduction. Sasuke and Sakura both glanced at him. No one could ever figure out how Naruto just seems to capture everyone's attention with his speeches. They are one of the many things that make people believe in him. It's something that the Kanoha 12 and many others pondered about Naruto. Bakashi was almost utterly confused by now. Naruto's introduction didn't match his academy record either. He also seemed to care very deeply for people who are precious to him. 
Not many ninja care as much as that for their comrades. Naruto claimed to care for them a whole lot more than the average shinobi. Even to people he barely knew, and even to the village that hated him. Alright tomorrow we will start with some survival training. Just with the four of us. Sakura sighed, she was going to have to ask an order for this conversation to move along faster. But we did survival training in the academy, why do we have to do more? Bakashi chuckled, he would surprise them now. Because all teams have to do this. Out of 27 graduates only 9 will pass. It has a 66% failure rate. None of the genin from the future showed any surprise by this. What the heck was up with this team? The academy record stated that he would get the revenge obsessed last Ichiha, a fangirl, and a dead last idiot. So far they didn't show any of that. He might have to talk to the Hokage about this. Anyways, meet me at training ground 7 at 6 am, tomorrow. Kakashi pauses for a minute. Oh and I would suggest that you don't eat breakfast, you might throw up. With that Kakashi was gone. Leaving the three genin alone. What should we do now Sakura asked, turning to her two teammates. I think we should start hanging out with the others. If we can get them to start improving early, then there will be less stress for us. We won't have to worry about them getting hurt. As you know, in the future we were not always there to save them. Naruto explained. Then how do you propose we actually do that Sasuke asked. They are not going to just do as we say. I know. We can have a congratulatory picnic. We tell them we want to celebrate the nine of us passing the actual test. Sakura suggested. We can have it at training ground 7. That's not a bad idea. We could spar against each other too. If we show them that the three of us are stronger than we all actually showed in the academy. It might just motivate them enough to work harder. Sasuke replied. If it all goes to plan, then we can start making it a weekly get together. We could even get Team Guy to join the group a few weeks after. If we catch their attention early, it might help us out in the long run. Naruto explained. You really just want to see all of them, don't you? Of course I do, Sakura, they all either died or were captured. I want all of us to live this time around. I am going to try my hardest to keep it that way. Naruto replied. I think that should work for now. Let's go track the teams down. We can plan our first get together after our test tomorrow. Sasuke said. So who should we look for first? They all might be home by now. No, I remember Shikamaru telling me that they were at the barbecue place in the evening. Kiba, I believe, told me they had their test the same day as the introduction. So if we hurry we can catch them before they head home. Naruto explained. Then team 8 is probably the team we should look for first. We have until at least 5 or 6 to meet up with team 10. Sakura said. I think they might be at training ground 8. They always go there, at least that's what Kiba told me. I am too far away to sense them from here. It would be easier if I could go into sage mode. Let's just go already. Sasuke interrupted as he jumped down from the academy roof to another smaller roof nearby. It didn't take long for them to find Team 8. Kur and I raised an eyebrow at the three of them when Team 7 walked into the training grounds. Weren't they supposed to be with Kakashi? What are you three doing here? Kiba asked as soon as he spotted them. We just wanted to know if you guys wanted to come to our congratulatory picnic at training ground 7 around 1 pm tomorrow Sakura explained. You want us to go on a picnic with you Kiba asked as Akimaru barked from on top of Kiba's head. We're planning to invite team 10 too, we were planning to do a little sparring. If you are up to it, of course. Sasuke smirked, they were definitely going to come now. I think it will be a great idea. I will go. Hinata shuddered as she poked her fingers together. That's awesome Hinata. What about Yoshino? Kiba Naruto asked in excitement. This was going just how he wanted it. I suppose it would be a good idea. I will go Shino responded. Fine I will go too. It will even give me a chance at kicking your face in a spar. Kiba said quite loudly. We will see about that dog's breath. I am way better than you think. Naruto replied with a foxy grin. Kiba huffed, I will believe it when I see it. Well we should probably go now, so that you can get back to training. Bye, see all of you tomorrow. Sakura butted in, before Naruto and Kiba could start a bigger argument. Right, we still have to talk to Team 10. Sasuke added. Bye guys, bye Kurenai sensei, sorry for bothering your team. Naruto cried out, before the three of them jumped into the trees to head to the barbecue place. Man, I am starving. You're always starving, Dobe Sasuke replied as they jumped from roof to roof. Shut up, team. I can't help being hungry. Though too bad it's not a Raymond place. I haven't had any in a long time. You had some yesterday. Right after we trained. Sasuke replied. Oh yeah. Well it's still a long time. Before we came back I hadn't had Raymond in months. Both of you knock it off. We're here. Sakura stated as they dropped down at the entrance of the barbecue restaurant. Good thing the owners are okay with me being here. Naruto pointed out as they walked in. There they are. Sasuke pointed to Team 10 at a small booth. Shikamaru looked absolutely bored. 
Ino was shouting at Choji for eating all the food, and Asuma looked almost as bored as Shikamaru. Hey guys Naruto shouted at them, as they walked up. What are you three doing here? Aren't you supposed to be with Kakashi Asuma asked. We have our test tomorrow. We came here to ask the three of you something. Sasuke replied, turning towards the three 12 year olds of Team 10. What troublesome thing is it Shikamaru asked with a yawn. Yeah forehead, what do you guys want Ino added. All three younger members of Team 10 looked at them for an answer. We wanted to know if you guys wanted to come to our congratulatory picnic. Teammates going. We will probably spar a little too. Naruto answered. Where and when is it Choji asked. Training ground 7, tomorrow at 1 pm. Are you in Sakura asked. I will go, anything to be with my Sasu kun, and to beat you forehead Ino shouted. I don't think so Ino pig. I can easily beat you. Sakura replied. That's a lie forehead Ino argued. Naruto ignored the two fighting Kanoichi, so will you guys go? Sure, it's free food. All of us probably won't get to hang out much once we start missions and stuff. Choji replied. You never know about Choji, we could always make this a weekly thing. Naruto replied knowingly. I was also planning on bringing a shogi board. Hopefully someone else is good enough to beat me. We all know Naruto can't. Sasuke stated. Hey I have you know. I am pretty good at it. I beat you a few times. Naruto grumbled. Sure you do dope. Sasuke replied with a smirk. Troublesome, I guess I will go. Maybe I will get a chance to stare at some clouds. I might even take you up on your challenge, Icha. Looking forward to it then. We should probably go before Sakura and Ino trash the place. Sasuke replied, pointing to the two arguing girls. Good point. Sakura. Come on, we are leaving. We still have stuff to do. Naruto yelled to her. The two arguing girls stopped shouting at each other when Naruto called to Sakura. Oh right. Well bye Ino pig, see you tomorrow. Sakura said as she began to walk towards the front door. Bye Shikamaru, Choji see you tomorrow. Naruto waved to them. Bye Asuma sensei, sorry we disturbed your team meeting. With it the three members of team 7 left. Ino sat back down in her seat beside Choji. What's with team 7? They are acting quite troublesome. I don't think I have ever seen Sasuke talk that much. Shikamaru mumbled. Yeah, they seem different. Choji added. But didn't you say Naruto was always troublesome? I did say that he is more troublesome than anyone I will ever know, Shikamaru replied. Alright boys that's enough talk. We will meet tomorrow at 9. I will make sure your training's done before 1. Asuma interrupted them. Training Ground 42. After training for a few hours Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura sat under a tree to discuss their plan for the next day. Betting the teams to agree about the picnic went well, now all we have to do tomorrow is pass our test, with Kakashi. Sakura said to her teammates. Yeah, luckily we know everyone pretty well. Naruto began. So at this moment, our current level is where it was during the end of the Chunin exams. Except I can't use Rasengan or Toads until I sign the contract and train with Iro Sanin. It would be too suspicious if I can just use it out of the blue. So I need to increase my speed and strength for now. Maybe add a few more wind jutsus. Naruto explained. We're all in the same boat here, we can't use anything extreme yet, unless we have to. Sasuke replied. Luckily our teamwork is back in sync. Since we work well with each other, we should be able to surprise Kakashi. He will probably underestimate us for the test anyways. So far we have the advantage. Let's go, rest up, and eat something. Wait, why didn't we eat when we were at the barbecue place? I don't know. You were talking about being hungry before we got there. Come on, we can go eat something now. Sakura replied to Naruto's question. Sakura you are going to have to bring the food for the picnic. Sasuke suddenly said. Right, because if I let the two of you get the food. The only food that would be in the basket is ramen and tomatoes. That's not true, I would bring other things. Besides, there isn't anything wrong with ramen. There isn't anything wrong with tomatoes either. They're healthy for you. Sasuke commented. Sakura sighed. You two can't really cook much anyways. Naruto will get overpriced for food or get spoiled if he bought stuff at the store. And you Sasuke, wouldn't even take the time to bring other food. Well that's why you're bringing the food. Naruto replied. Come on, let's go already. The next morning at training ground 7. Kakashi arrived at training ground 7 at 10 am, no one was in sight. He could feel their chakra signatures, but he couldn't see them. The puff of smoke suddenly appeared in front of him. Only to reveal his team. All three looked refreshed and ready to go. Sorry we were late sensei, you see my alarm doesn't work, so I got up late. And on the way here I found a drowning fish that needed saving. I had to save it, you see. Every life is important. Naruto replied with a straight face. I was late because as I was leaving, a cat jumped through my window and into my house. I had to get him out before I could leave. He ran all over my house and broke a lot of things. My parents made me clean it up. Sakura replied. 
I was late because my alarm clock was broken. So I had to go buy a new one. There was a long line at the checkout counter, and sadly the line was filled with mostly fangirls. Sasuk explained. The Kashi sweat dropped. Are my excuses that bad? If they were going to be ninja they would have to be more serious. Okay well let's start the test. Kakashi pulled out two bells. You have to get these from me, and you have until noon to do so. But there are only two sensei bells. I know, only two of you will be getting a bell. One of you won't get a bell, and that person will be tied to the pole with no lunch. That person will also be going back to the academy. Kakashi explained. Kakashi smirked behind his mask. He got them now. But to Kakashi's surprise they didn't react to it at all. What was up with his team? Kakashi set the timer to an alarm clock he had brought to noon, and sat the clock down on the middle stump. Begin. With those words Team 7 vanished into the trees. Weird, I can barely sense them anymore. Do they know how to suppress their chakra Kakashi thought. My team sure is interesting. I wonder what they can do. Kakashi then proceeded to pull out his beloved orange book from his pouch. A few minutes later he had to jump away from a barrage of kunai and shuriken. To his surprise, Sasuke came charging at him at a fast pace for a genin. Kakashi went to intercept Sasuke when he felt another presence coming at him from behind. He discovered that it was Naruto. So maybe they will figure out my test. Kakashi quickly put his book away. He would need both of his hands to fend the two of them off. The two jumped away from him, and both slid into a tojutsu stance. The two proceeded to attack him at once. One attacking where the other wasn't. They worked well with each other as if they had been working together for years. It was getting a bit harder to block both of them at the same time. The three of them had been fighting off each other for over 20 minutes now. Bakashi jumped away just in time to miss Sakura coming at him from his right. So they were leading me towards her. Bakashi's eyes widened when Naruto and Sasuke both began doing hand signs. No way, they can't know that. Wind style. Great breakthrough. Fire style. Great fireball jutsu. Bakashi quickly used body replacement to get out of the way. Once the technique was over Kakashi surveyed the damage. How much chakra was in that? Kakashi jumped down from the tree a moment later. He was definitely going to have to be careful. Sakura and Sasuke came rushing at him this time. Naruto hung back, waiting for something. Kakashi quickly began fending them off. Wow Sakura is pretty good in Tojutsu. Her record said she was really low in Tojutsu. Age bunch and no Jutsu at those words many Naruto's appeared around the training grounds. As soon as the Naruto clones appeared they began swarming Kakashi. Sakura and Sasuke jumped out of the way as the Naruto clones swarmed around them. Kakashi swiftly made his way through all the clones. He didn't notice that they were getting him pushed back into a triple tripwire. Once he set it off, it was too late, and he was caught into a chakra-infused net. Sakura quickly grabbed the bells from his belt just before Kakashi cut himself loose. Just as he freed himself from the trap, the alarm clock went off. The three of you are good. I didn't expect that at all. Kakashi replied truthfully. So Sakura, who are you going to give the other bell to? The both of them, after all they did most of the work. Sakura said, throwing them each a bell. No way Sakura, you did a lot during the test. You can have my bell. Naruto said, throwing his bell back to her. No you don't, Naruto, you can have my bell. Sasuke passed him the bell he was holding. After all it was mostly your plan. You don't have to worry about it, all three of you pass Kakashi replied. The reason for this test is for teamwork, but the three of you already knew that, didn't you? Of course we know, after all you have to look underneath the underneath. Naruto replied with a foxy grin. That is correct. Those who abandon the mission are trash. But those who abandon your comrades are worse than trash. Kakashi explained to them. The three genin smiled and smirked in Sasuke's case at his words. We will meet tomorrow at the bridge over there at 7 am. Kakashi said, pointing to a bridge a few yards away. Later. Kakashi waved before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. That was quite fun, don't you think Naruto asked his friends. The drowning fish Naruto. That's the best you got Sakura replied. I thought it was funny. Have you heard the excuses Kakashi has given us? The others will be here soon, Sakura, why don't you go get the picnic supplies? Naruto and I can clean up the training grounds. Sasuke explained before another argument started. Sakura nodded before leaving the two best friends alone. Hopefully they don't start fighting while she is gone. It normally happened if she left the two of them alone long enough. Sometimes they just did it for fun too. Team 10 walked into training ground 7 just before 1 pm. They paused in their tracks when they found Sasuke and Naruto in a fierce Jutsu match. The two of them were shouting at each other about something. Shikamaru couldn't really make it out. Troublesome. They look pretty evenly matched, and the academy Naruto never fought like that. Choji stated as he munched on some chips. Yeah, and Sasuke always beat him. 
Now it's hard to tell who will even win. Shikamara replied. Where the heck is the forehead girl? Lino asked, looking around for her pink haired best friend. What are they fighting about? Kiba's voice asked, followed by a bark from Akimaru. Teammate had arrived. I don't even know. It's too troublesome. I can barely follow their movements, they are fighting at a high speed. Shino observed. I hope they won't get hurt too badly. Hanada added softly. The six genin watched Naruto and Sasuke spar against each other for 10 minutes. Before Ino broke the silence. Maybe we should break them, up. Ino suggested as she watched the two jump apart from each other, only for them to jump right back in. Ino, I don't think we could stop them. Instead of slowing down, they seem to be speeding up. Shikamaru answered. What the hell is going on? Sakura's voice shouted from behind the two teams. Most of them jumped in surprise. How could they not notice the Sakura approach? Sakura was now standing beside them carrying a big basket and a large blanket. Naruto and Sasuke didn't seem to have heard their teammates shout. They were still going at it. It was like they weren't even paying attention to the outside world. Uh, hey Sakura. We just got here a little bit ago. Your teammates have been fighting since before we even arrived. They didn't even notice us. Ino explained to her. I see. Sakura set the basket and blanket down before marching over towards her two fighting teammates. This doesn't look too good. Choji said as he ate another chip from his bag of chips. Hey Choji shared some of those chips. I didn't bring any popcorn. Kiba told Akamichi. Toji held the bag out towards the Inuzuka, who dug his hand into the bag to take a few. Be careful, Sakura Hinata quietly called after her. What the heck do you two think you are doing? Sakura yelled at her teammates as she jumped right in between them and punched the ground in the process, leaving a small crater where her fist had been. Sasuke and Naruto froze in their tracks. They were in trouble now. Uh, hey, Sakura chan. We were just uh, sparring. Naruto said as he rubbed the back of his head nervously. Don't be angry at me. It was all Sasuke team's fault. Naruto said quickly. No, it wasn't done. You started it. It was. Naruto was interrupted by Sakura. Both of you knock it off right now. Our friends are here for it to know when you spar that you forget about everything around you. We don't have time for that. Sorry Sakura. The two boys replied in unison. But now come on, everyone else is waiting. Sakura turned back to the others. Ino, Kiba, Choji, and Hinata's faces showed shock and disbelief. How did you do that? Ino asked after a few minutes. You mean the punch. I just enhanced my punch with Chakra and let it all out at once. Didn't you know that's how Tsunade of the Sanin fight? Sakura replied. Ino shook her head. I didn't know you were that strong Sakura. Well I didn't know any of you were that strong. The three of us have trained a lot. Most of it was in secret, if we want this generation of ninja to be better than the ones before. Then we have to step it up. We have a long way to go before we surpass anyone. We do have a tough matchup, but I think we can do it. Naruto grinned. Well let's eat already I am starving. Everyone seemed to snap out of whatever weird days they were in when Naruto stopped talking. Yeah, then I want to spar with you, Naruto. Kiba replied. Akimaru barked in agreement. I also had Sakura bring the shogi as well. If any of you would care to play around with me. Sasuke explained. I suppose I could play you in a game, after we eat. Shino replied. Sasuke nodded. What about you, Shikamaru? Troublesome, I guess I could play the winner. You guys do that. Forehead, I want a sparring match against you. I want to see how strong you have become. Ino told her friend. Even with your new little trick. Once the blanket was spread out and the food was passed out, everyone found a spot under the shade of a large tree and began to eat while talking to one another. Awesome, my idea is working, it won't be long till we can add Team Guy too. Lee should be the easiest one to convince. We'll be strong in no time. Naruto thought as he watched everyone talk together. So, how did you guys come up with this idea, anyways? Choji asked when there was a pause in conversation. That's easy. We wanted to celebrate graduating, why not with your friends? We could also celebrate that we were the nine genin that made it through the real test. Sakura replied. But how did you know that yesterday? Didn't you have your test this morning? Hinata asked. Everyone turned to the three members of Team 7. They had all been thinking the same thing. Well we were going to celebrate even if we didn't pass. Though I knew we would pass from the start. Our team consists of the last Ichiha, a Kanoichi that will become the best medical ninja ever, and me, the future orange Hokage Naruto replied. What's wrong with all of us hanging out anyways? We're all friends. You only get stronger by protecting and working together with your precious people. That's really nice of you Shino commented. Friends seem very important to you. Aren't they for you Sasuke replied. It's almost the same way with your bugs. Think of it like a big hive working together to protect one another. I will always cherish my friends no matter what. There are too many things in life we take for granted. One moment it's there and the next it's gone. I don't want to lose anything if I can help it. Naruto added. 
You talk as if we are all going to die tomorrow. Shikamaru analyzed. You're really troublesome, Naruto. Crap, I forgot how smart Shikamaru is. Naruto thought before grinning. I wouldn't be me if I wasn't, now would I? Naruto turned to Kiba, who was giving the rest of his food to Akimaru. So, Kiba, are you still up for that spar? Hell yeah. You're going down, just me and you though. Tojutsu only. Kiba replied. Alright, that's fine with me. If anyone else wants to join and we will be over there. Naruto explained as he walked away with Kiba. Um one forehead we can use the other side of the training grounds. Ino grabbed Sakura's hand and dragged her to the other side of the training grounds. So let's see how good you are, Shino. Sasuke said as he took out the shogi board from the large picnic basket. Hinata if you want to play too, just ask. Sasuke explained to the shy girl who was watching Kiba and Naruto spar. Hinata nodded her head. Okay I'm fine right now. Just at the edge of the training grounds hiding stealthily in the trees were team 7, 8, and 10 senseis. Your team is weird, Kakashi. Asuma commented as he lit up a cigarette. I don't think I have seen anyone like them. I have noticed. During the test, they teamed up on me right away. If they have actually acted as their academy records say. Then I would have gotten the worst team. Now it seems like I have the best team out of the three of us. I bet they could even match up against Guy's team. I haven't really figured them out yet, but I will. My team's not bad, all three will be great trackers someday. If they keep working in a group like this. Things might just get interesting. Kurin I replied. My team has good teamwork. I would expect that from a genin whose parents are the Inoshikacho. Asuma explained. Naruto just might have the right idea. I think we observed them long enough, let's go. Kakashi said after a few minutes. The three jonin nodded at each other before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. A few hours later. After a few spars and some laughs, it was beginning to get late. The sun was setting behind the trees. I can't believe you beat me, it's not possible. Next time the ending will be different. Kiba grumbled out to Naruto. I am using Akimaru next time, then you won't stand a chance. Akimaru barked in agreement. Naruto grinned, well Kiba how about next week? We can make this a weekly thing. Naruto turned to the others. What about the rest of you? I am in. Sasuke's a good challenge and Shogi. Shikamaru replied. I think I could get a little training in too. Working together is a good idea, if we learn to work well with each other, then we won't have problems with missions. As troublesome as it is, I think we need to be ready for anything. Yeah, if Shikamaru is in, then I am in too. Choji agreed. There is no way I am losing to my forehead again, count me in. Ino declared. So that's all team 10. Now what about teammate Naruto thought? I thought today was fun. I will be there as well, Hinata replied. It would be logical to accept your invitation. Shino stated. Of course I am going to come too. I don't want to be left out of all the excitement. Kiba said, as Akimaru Bark followed an agreement. Awesome, how about Sunday afternoons? Shinobi normally get that day off, at least they are on a long-term mission outside the village. Naruto explained. How did you know that Choji asked? If you have been in the Hokage's office enough times, then you tend to learn a few things. I see Oji sent quite a lot. Naruto replied. So is everyone okay with the plan? Sasuke asked. Everyone nodded in agreement before going their separate ways, leaving Team 7 alone. Wow, I can't believe that went so well. Sakura said after a few minutes of silence. Shikamaru and Shino seemed oddly suspicious about us. Everything that we said seemed to be questioned. From what I remember, Shikamaru barely wanted to do anything. Sasuke explained. We are going to have to be careful around him and Shino. Otherwise we would seem too suspicious. They might say something to the Hokage. We don't need to add another thing to our list Naruto replied. Let's just go home and rest for the night. Tomorrow we can meet up early to train, before Kakashi shows up. Sasuke and Sakura agreed to meet the next morning, before the three of them left to head home. Naruto walked into his apartment. It was lonely here, that's why he liked to spend a lot of time with others. Naruto was sure Sasuke was probably feeling the same way. Naruto sighed as he sat down on his bed. He needs to get into contact with Kurama. He hadn't heard from the fox at all since they had been back, it was slightly worrying him. Naruto crossed his legs and closed his eyes. Meditating was an easier way to get into contact with him. At least as of now. If Kurama didn't come back with them. Then he was stuck with the old Kurama, who hates his guts. Naruto breathed in deeply before exhaling. Kurama's cage appeared in front of him. Goody wouldn't have to walk through long water-filled hallways. Kurama, are you there? Naruto called into the darkness. Naruto waited for a few minutes, listening for anything. Kurama Naruto called out again. This time Naruto heard deep breathing. Kit, is that you a deep voice called out to him. Kurama, you came back with us Naruto smiled, this made everything a lot better. I did come back with you, but there is something you should know. As I was doing that I felt another presence at the last second. Kurama explained. 
What do you mean? Someone came back to the past with us. I think so. I felt extra chakra signatures flow through your body. It was last minute. I didn't know who it was. That's why I haven't been able to talk to you lately. It was a long trip, they took a lot out of me. Three people wouldn't have made me this tired. There had to be at least three other chakra signatures Karama explained. But I am glad you got to come along. It helps me out. It couldn't have been an enemy, they were all dead. At least I think so. I didn't feel anyone there. Well I guess we were all O on chakra. Naruto thought as he started to pace in front of Kyubi's cage. I am sorry kid, it was so last minute that I couldn't even tell you who it was. I was too focused on the the nine-tailed fox demon replied. It's alright Karama, I think I know who it might be. I will have to talk it over with Sasuke and Sakura tomorrow. Naruto explained. We can figure out where to go from there. Good idea kid, I should be able to talk to you outside your mindscape now. Okay, I will talk with you later. I am exhausted already, and it's only the beginning. Naruto opened his eyes to find himself back in his apartment. That sure takes a load off my shoulders. Now for bed. Naruto mumbled as he started doing his evening routine. Tomorrow will be the start of Team 7 second, first day of being a genin. It was early the next morning when Naruto walked into training ground 7. Since no one is here yet, I can train on my own for a bit. Naruto said to himself, before making 40 clones. Alright, I want 20 of you to work on tree climbing. The rest of you work on cutting those leaves. Naruto instructed as he pointed to a tree full of leaves. On a boss the clones replied in unison. Once the clones began working, Naruto started to stretch out his muscles and started to think about his conversation he had with Karama last night. If it's the three I am thinking of, then for now we should be okay. I need to make sure though. If I am wrong, then it will mess up everything. But if I am correct, then it will be an advantage for us. This is so frustrating. What if it was an enemy Naruto paused in his thinking. I need to stop freaking out. I am making it worse than it actually is. I need to calm down. Naruto thought. That means for now I probably shouldn't tell Sakura or Sasuke. Naruto said out loud. Shouldn't tell us what Sasuke's voice broke Naruto out of his thoughts. Naruto turned around to find Sasuke and Sakura watching him. How long had they been there I must have been too busy with my thoughts to sense them. Oh I was just thinking how maybe we should bring in Team Guy earlier than planned. Naruto lied. Though he was thinking about that. Naruto didn't want to stress either of them out. Since three someones possibly had come back with them. They already had enough to deal with right now. Maybe we should, both Niji and Lee are really good to jutsu users. Sakura replied. Tenten is really good with weapons too. If I remember correctly she was pretty strong. Sasuke nodded in agreement. It's not a bad idea to consider. I think we should at least go a few more weeks without them. It would be too overwhelming all at once. We can bring them in sometime before the wave mission. Which is in what a couple of months. Yeah, I remember it was after a captured Tora, it was like our third time that we chasing that cat. Naruto replied. The three of them shivered in unison. Every gen and team hated that mission. So what's with the clones? I thought you said you didn't want to use them too much right away Sasuke asked. I know I said that, but as everyone knows my chakra control sucks. If I can get it high enough, all of mine will take less chakra. Naruto explained. Yes, because you run out of chakra all the time. Sasuke replied sarcastically. You have enough chakra to equal a cage at 12, and your chakra capacity is still growing. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. I know that, it is why I can't learn certain things as fast, because of my control. Alright guys that's enough for now. Let's just get to training before Kakashi shows up Sakura interrupted them as she dug in her ninja pouch for a scroll. But that and mine team 7 trained for a few hours before Kakashi showed up. They were making a great headway in their training. It was nearing 8am, and the three members of team 7 were taking a break. I bet you guys 10 bucks that Kakashi will show up earlier than usual. Naruto suddenly said. You're on dope, there is no way Kakashi is showing up earlier. Why would he Sasuke replied. I am with Sasuke on this Naruto. There is no way Kakashi will be here in less than two hours. It's already been almost an hour. A few minutes later Kakashi arrived. Yo. Sorry I am late a black cat crossed my path, so I had to take the long way around. Sasuke and Sakura grumbled as they pulled out the money and handed it to Naruto. I always forget how extremely lucky you are with bets. Sakura mumbled. I should have known. That bet was so out of nowhere. Sasu commented. Well now that we are all here. Let's go get our first D rank mission. Kakashi said as he began to lead the way, his book was already out. Sasuke and Sakura grumbled to each other all of the way to the tower. Naruto just grinned, they fell for it almost every time. Page Ai san. Hiruka sensei. Team 7 is here for our mission. Naruto shouted as he burst into the mission room. Hiruzen chuckled at Naruto's antics. Naruto sure made everything brighter. 
Hello Naruto, have you been doing well Aruka greeted from his spot next to the third. I have thanks for asking Naruto replied before turning back to Hiruzen. Hello Naruto, I think I have a few missions for your team. Let me see, there is clearing out a garden, painting a fence, and shopping for some villagers. The third read from the list of D rank missions. Hiruzen could have sworn he heard a long sigh from every single member of Team 7. We will take all three and be back later, Naruto exclaimed. Now, Naruto, did you even ask your teammates or Kakashi if that was okay? Aruka asked. Well, I know Sasuke and Sakura were okay with it. Naruto turned to Kakashi. Can we do all three missions, please? We can get them done faster this way. Naruto begged. All right, we can take all three of them. Kakashi replied from behind his orange book. Yes. Hand them over Jai san we will get them done in no time. Naruto declared. Calm down, Dobe. Sasuke told his best friend, as the third Hokage handed Kakashi the mission files. I am calm, Sasuke team. I know you want to get these boring missions out of the way just as much as I do. Naruto replied as Team 7 was leaving the mission office. Once they were standing outside the tower, did Kakashi talk? Okay, which one do you guys want to do first? All of them, with my cage bunshin, then they will be done in no time. Naruto explained. Naruto, these missions are designed to be for teamwork. You can't just do them all yourself. Kakashi replied. Kakashi, our team already has good teamwork. This is a way faster method in getting them all done. If we accomplish a lot of them, we can get higher missions sooner. We all know you don't want to be stuck watching us do boring D-rank missions Sasuke said. Each of us can take one, and Naruto can send clones with Sasuke and I, so that we get them done. In a way we are all still working together. Sakura added. Kakashi sighed, his team really like to be complex. Fine, that is what we will do then. Kakashi complied. Page bunch and no Naruto shouted as many Naruto's appeared. Let's get started. It had been a long two weeks of boring missions and training. It became a sort of routine for Team 7. Today though was another get together with the other gen and they graduated with. Everyone had already arrived and was doing their usual thing. Sasuke, Shikamaru and Shino were playing shogi. At least for now, they normally joined in with the spars after a while. Anata was sparring with Ino and Sakura. Sometimes they would all switch partners up. Toji, Kiba and Naruto under a tree, resting after a long spar, which Naruto won once again. Hey Naruto, can I ask you a question Kiba asked when there was a long pause in their conversation. Sure, what's on your mind Naruto asked. Well, I was just wondering. How strong are you? I have seen you use elemental jutsus already. My mom told me that most shinobi don't even start their element training, at least Chunin.Kiba explained. Well I guess I am not like most shinobi. I have tons of chakra.Naruto replied. I am pretty good with Tajutsu already, and combined with my cage bunshin, that's already a good combination that works for me. So, I add in my elemental training to change it up. Kiba nodded and paused for a minute. Do you think you could help me find out what my element is? Kiba asked. Sure, I have a pack of chakra paper if you want to try now. Naruto answered. Hey Naruto, do you think I could find out what mine is? Too Choji interrupted. Of course you can do Choji, Naruto replied as he dug a scroll out of his pocket. Naruto opened the scroll and applied chakra to it. A package of cream-colored paper appeared. Hey, does anyone else want to know what their element is? Naruto called out to the others. I have always wanted to know what mine is Ina replied as she began to walk over to him with Hinata and Sakura not far behind. We should probably go over there too. Shikamaru stated. They might cause mass destruction to the training grounds. Once everyone gathered closer, Naruto handed each person a small square of paper. Now all you have to do is push your chakra into the paper. If it rips in half your element is wind. If it begins to burn away, then your element is fire. If it gets wet it is water. If it wrinkles your element is lightning, and finally if your paper turns to dirt and crumbles away, your element is earth. Naruto explained to the genin. Dear Naruto, Sasuke and I can demonstrate for you. Sakura said, as she lifted her chakra paper up so everyone could see it. Sakura sent chakra through her body to the paper. After a few seconds the paper started to crumble away. So you have earth then dot Hinata said, one Sakura's paper disappeared. Sakura replied yes, before nodding at Sasuke to go next. Sasuke infused his paper with chakra. Sasuke's paper wrinkled before starting to burn away. If you are like me, then you might have two elements early. Most shinobi have their second element trained by the time they are. Sasuke explained before turning to Naruto, to indicate that he could go next. Naruto sent his chakra into the paper. Like it did the first time, Naruto watched his paper split in half. What shocked a few was when a few seconds later one side of the paper became wet. Wow, I didn't even know you had a second chakra nature. I thought you just at wind. Sakura commented. Yeah it was a last minute thing. I just found out recently. Naruto explained. 
I want to go next, I just know I am going to get to Kiba shouted as he sent Chakra to the paper. A few seconds later Kiba's paper started to crumble away. Looks like you only got one, dog breath Naruto joked once the paper fully disappeared. It appears Choji and I have the same as you, Kiba Shino stated. His Chakra paper was nowhere in sight. Choji looked pretty satisfied and was now eating a bag of chips. I got Earth 2 Choji simply said before reaching into his bag of chips. I want to go now Eno exclaimed as she sent Chakra into the small paper. Eno's paper began to get soggy. Oh gross, that feels weird. Eno cried out as she dropped the paper. Hinata followed suit, her paper did the same as Eno's. I got water as well. Hinata mumbled to the group. She was getting better at talking to everyone without shuddering. Okay, Shikamaru, it's your turn. Naruto said, as everyone turned to the lazy Nara who had yet to do anything. Troublesome. Shikamaru sent Chakra into the square paper just like everyone else had. It was only a moment later that the paper caught on fire. Well that's everyone, why don't we all train in elements for a while? I have a few water scrolls on me. I know Sasuke always carries a few fires, and Sakura just got a scroll that contains Earth. Naruto explained. That's a great idea Kiba shouted. Once I get a few down, I will finally be able to kick you. I don't think you could beat Naruto, even if your element could win over him. The first few times he fought you, he didn't even use any wind jutsus. Shino explained. Thanks Shino, I really appreciate the encouragement. Kiba replied sarcastically. Don't worry about it Kiba. I am sure one day you will be able to win against me. You are really strong too. Naruto said, trying to cheer Kiba up. Everyone has strengths and weaknesses. Even me. Like for example, I totally suck at that the most I can do is dispel it. Another weakness I have is that I always let my emotions get the best of me. Shinobi are not supposed to show emotion in battle. Sadly, I can't help it. Naruto explained. That's not all either. I like to save anyone I can, even if they are my enemy at first. I like to believe I can save anyone from the darkness and bring them into the light. I will always be willing to save anyone who needs my help. Even to those who do not want my help at first. The training grounds were quiet. All anyone could do was look at Naruto, speechless. I have never understood how you do that. At least I know I was never the only one Shikamaru said, speaking out what he was thinking. Indeed, you always sound inspiring when you get like that. Shino commented. Naruto turned to them, what do you mean? This is the first time I have said anything inspiring as you say. Both Shino and Shikamaru tensed. Naruto's eyes widened, he was correct. He knew who it was Naruto grinned, now all he needed was the third person. He was glad they were alright in the end. Though the conversation will have to wait. No worries, I have probably done this before in front of you guys. I must have forgotten. Naruto replied smoothly as he rubbed the back of his head. Hey. Why don't we start that training? Sakura's voice broke through the tense atmosphere that had started to build up. Sakura quickly shared a look with Sasuke. Something was up, and they were going to find out, and soon too. The group of Genin had been training for over two hours. Everyone was improving at a fast rate too. Naruto wondered why no one realized how much potential the Kanoha 12 really had. If someone had tried this the first time, all of us would have been even stronger than we were the first time. Naruto thought, as he watched everyone train together. Both Shikamaru and Shino kept glancing in his direction several times throughout the two hours. It was now getting late, the sun had already begun to set, and if you looked close enough you could see a few stars. Naruto was just about to tell everyone that it was getting late, when Niji came walking into the training grounds. Anata-sama, your father sent me to find you. He expected you to be home an hour ago. Niji explained when he came to a stop. I am sorry Niji Nai San Hinata replied as she gathered her things so she could leave. What are you all doing here Niji asked a few seconds later. We're training together, what does it look like we are doing Naruto replied as he stepped in front of Niji. Naruto watched him carefully, besides Team Guy was supposed to be added to the group soon. He had to get Niji to agree somehow. I don't think I have ever heard of a bunch of genin training together, at least not all nine of you. Niji said, looking over Naruto. Naruto grinned, this was perfect timing to do a little test. This would narrow down his list. So Niji, I heard around the village that your team consists of the strongest genin in Konoha. Do you think your team could maybe have a little spar with me and my team Naruto asked the Hayuga. My team is pretty strong, what makes you believe that your team could match up against mine Niji replied, keeping his eyes on Naruto. There was something going on. I know what my team can do. Naruto began. Ah, I see now, you're one of those Hayuga that believes in fate. Where you think that destiny controls us, right? You don't think Team 7 can handle it. We must appear like a bunch of losers to you. Naruto added. The way Niji replied would either prove he was right or prove that he was wrong. Niji smirked as if he knew the game Naruto was playing. 
I don't believe in fate, an old friend of mine once told me that you could make your own path. People can choose their own destiny by their own actions. Naruto heard a collected gasp from behind him. So the others are finally catching on. Naruto grinned, just like he thought. That's some friend you have, he seems like a really smart guy. I would love to meet him someday. Naruto replied with a foxy grin. Niji chuckled, I think you two would get along well. Your personality is very similar. Before Naruto could reply Kiba interrupted. I need to head home, my mom will kill me if I stay out too long. This conversation also confuses me. So I think it's a good idea if I just go. Kiba said. Akimaru barked in agreement, the small dog wanted to go home too. Yeah, I better get home too, my dad will be worried if I am out too late. Ino explained. Come on Choji, you can walk me there. Ino told the chubby boy. Ushuri no, but what about Shikamaru? Shouldn't he come with us too? Choji asked. Don't worry about it Choji, I have to ask Naruto something. Shikamaru replied to his best friend. Ino and Choji said goodbye, before leaving the training grounds to head home. Anata-sama, why don't you go on ahead, I don't want your father to be angry with you. Niji told his cousin. Okay Hinata replied. She knew something was going on, but at the moment the rest of them weren't allowed to know. Once Hinata had left the training grounds, Sakura turned to Naruto. Okay, I need to know what the hell is going on, Naruto. Naruto rubbed the back of his head nervously. This part of the conversation was going to be troublesome. Well you see. It all started when Kurama told me that he felt other chakra signatures attached to ours when we left from the future. I didn't tell you because I thought it would have stressed you out. I have thought about it since I found out. There was only one group that came to my mind. One that I knew could have possibly gotten there at the last second. Naruto explained. Isn't that right Naruto turned to Shikamaru, Shino and Niji. So tell me what happened. Shikamaru sighed, yes it was us. We were trapped in that base for two months. Sadly, Sai died the day we broke up. He tried to hold the last remaining ninja off so we could get away. After we escaped, the three of us went searching for you. Since the three of us were injured, it took a while to travel. Shikamaru explained. When we finally found you it was on a war-torn battlefield. I was about to call out to you, but all of a sudden we felt a large buildup of chakra. We didn't know what you were doing, but we had to find out. So we walked up to the three of you. Your eyes were closed, but the chakra was getting stronger. I don't think you could hear anything. The three of us were holding each other up by the time we got there, we weren't at our full strength. I had a broken leg, and Shino had a few broken ribs. Shikamaru went to shake Sasuke's shoulder to get your guy's attention. As soon as Shikamaru's hand made contact, all of our chakra began to get sucked out. I remember blacking out after that. When I woke up I found myself in the Hyuga compound. Niji clarified. I also woke up in my home at the Aviram compound. I was confused at first. Until I started to think about what happened before we left. Only you, Naruto, could somehow figure out a way for us to be sent back to the past. Shino said, as told his part of the story. At first I wasn't sure if you were actually you. Shikamaru said. I started suspecting it was you from the future, when you invited us to the very first picnic get together. You were also way too nice to Sasuke. Wow, I wasn't expecting this at all. Being back is a lot to soak in, isn't it? Sakura finally replied. It was at first, but then again I am not like Naruto, who can express his feelings easily Shikamaru chuckled. Everyone else but Naruto nodded in agreement. Hey, I don't think there is anything wrong about missing everyone. I mean they all died. Naruto replied, with a serious look. His blue eyes dimmed a bit. We all know, dope. That's part of the reason we are all here in the first place. Sasu commented. So Hayuga, are you going to be bringing your team along next Sunday? Yeah Niji, you guys should come. Since you are you from the future, it makes my job a lot easier. I don't have to knock some sense into you this time. Naruto added. I guess we could come, you know how he is. He loves to spar with anyone. Niji replied. What has everyone been working on? Well the first two times we got together, we only did a few spars. Though we did element training today and that went really well. Naruto explained. I figured you would probably join these three, and Shogi. Naruto pointed to Sasuke, Shikamaru and Shino. Who I like to call the supposed geniuses Naruto said as he made air quotes around geniuses. Supposed geniuses Sasuke, Shino and Niji asked in unison. Yeah, you know the three of you are the quiet genius cool one of each team. Naruto replied. That's what everyone else called you in the first timeline. Really Naruto, that's how you explain it. Sakura said. What are the rest of us supposed to be then? Oh I know Sasuke began. Kiba, Ino, Lee and you, Naruto, are the loud obnoxious hyper one of the teams. Yeah, and Hinata, Choji, Tenten and Sakura are the peacekeepers nice not good if angered. Shikamaru added. That all sounds about right, it matches each one of their personalities almost perfectly. Shino commented. 
Sure they do, but I think all of you need loud ones. Naruto replied. Who else would be able to deal with your guy's silent nature? Only us of course, we all balance each other out. You are doing it again, you really must not realize that you do it. Sakura said. What do you mean? Do what? She is talking about how you make everything sound positive. You also start going on a rant that for some reason, it causes others to pay attention to. It's only in moments like these that you don't sound stupid. You also didn't say anything negative about anyone. You have always accepted the way you are and how everyone else is. Sasuke answered. Oh, well, it just happens. Naruto grinned sheepishly as he rubbed the back of his head. It was a minute later that Naruto added, Hey, I am not stupid, Sasuke team. Troublesome, I think we should call it a night. We can go over plans another time. I really don't want to deal with anything else right now. Shikamaru stated before Sasuke could reply to Naruto. That idea, Hinata might be a little worried if I stay out too long, after sending her ahead. Niji replied. Oh yeah, we meet every Sunday at 1 pm. Unless your team is on a long-term mission. Sakura explained. I will see all of you at the next gathering, then Shino said before walking out of the training grounds. Shikamaru and Niji soon followed suit a few minutes later. Once the two of them were gone, Sakura turned to Naruto. I can't believe you didn't tell us sooner. What if it wasn't them that had come with us? What if it was an enemy? Naruto you can't always place everything on your shoulders. We are here to help too. I know that, and I am sorry for not telling you guys. I thought it would be easier not to tell you. Naruto replied. It's fine dope, don't worry about it. Let's all just go home. I don't want to deal with anything else tonight, either. Sasuke said as he hit a yawn behind his hand. The three bid each other goodbye before leaving the training grounds just like the others had. One week later. Where are we going, Niji? You didn't tell us anything, besides to meet up with you. Tenten asked, as Lee and Tenten followed Niji. Last week, our team was invited to train with this year's graduate Genin. I couldn't say no, they have great potential. Niji replied. Oh how youthful they sound. I can't wait to see their flames of youth Lee shouted for everyone in Kanoha to hear. Lee, you need to calm down. What if they think your shouting is unyouthful? Niji asked. Niji didn't know why he didn't try this before. It definitely made Lee calm down. Right, I am sorry. Where are we meeting them? Lee replied. Training Ground 7, they meet there every Sunday. Niji explained. Dean Guy walked into Training Ground 7 a few minutes later. Everyone else was already there. Like Naruto said, Shikamaru, Shino, and Sasuke were playing shogi. Well, two of them were, the other was watching. Anada, Sakura and Ino were talking not far away under the shade of a tree. Naruto was sitting in the middle of the training grounds, both Kiba and Choji standing around him. They were probably trying to figure out what he was doing. Hey Niji. I was wondering when your team would show up. Naruto called to him as he opened his eyes and stood up. Yeah, sorry we are a little late. These are my teammates Lee and Tenten. Niji introduced. So Naruto, do you still want our teams to spar against each other? Niji asked. Sure. I am sure Sasuke and Sakura are up for it. Hey, why don't we have a team tournament? All four teams can participate. Naruto replied. That sounds like fun. We should do it. Kiba agreed. I guess, it doesn't sound too bad. Joji added. Hey guys, do you want to do a team tournament? Kiba asked the others. The team tournament? Who started this? Naruto Sasuke replied. Come on team, it will be fun. We can see who the strongest team is. Naruto said. That isn't a bad idea. Shino commented. Troublesome, I have a feeling this might become a big argument. Shikamaru stated. I think it is a youthful idea Lee suddenly cried out. Naruto, I don't want to spar today. We had a three for all yesterday during training. Sakura said. I don't really want to either. I wanted to work on element training. Ino added. I don't know, Hinata mumbled. Hmm, well, if it's okay with you, Tenten. Do you think you could sit out with the rest of the girls? We can do just guys from each team. Otherwise if you joined, the teams would be uneven. Naruto explained. I guess I could. Tenten replied as she walked over to the other girls to introduce herself. Naruto turned back to the guys. Alright, how do you guys want to do the tournament? Naruto, I didn't say anything about agreeing. Shikamaru replied. I can just see the mass destruction the training ground will have when we are all done. Shikamaru, it is a training ground. Niji stated. Troublesome, fine I will go along with this tournament thing. Shikamaru finally agreed. Why don't we do Niji and Lee vs Kiba and Shino in the first match? Then the second match can be Choji and Shikamaru vs Naruto and I Sasuke suggested. That sounds like a good idea. Then the winners of those matches can fight each other. If they are able to continue anyways. Naruto replied. Troublesome, I guess this is uneatable. We can do Shikamaru, don't worry. Choji said. I know, but it is going to be tough. Naruto and Sasuke are really strong, Shikamaru replied. 
Let's get started then, I am ready for this Kiba cried. Arf. Akimaru barked in agreement. Yosh. I cannot wait. Our flames of youth burns brightly Lee shouted. Naruto laughed, this is going to be a day to remember. Kiba quit shouting. We are fighting first, and I don't want you to get cocky about it. Lee and Niji have a year of training over us. Shino told his loud teammate. Sorry Kiba grumbled, he didn't know why Shino had to be so serious all the time. Can you guys start the tournament already? We're getting old over here Ino yelled at them. Naruto, Sasuke, Shikamaru and Choji walked over to the tree line not too far from the girls. So that the sparring tournament could start. So, no bets Naruto asked, turning to the others. No way, I learned the hard way last time. You have too good of luck. I always lose. Shikamaru replied. I am not betting with you either. I know how you are, and Choji I would advise you to not bet against Naruto. He is overly lucky on anything. Sasuke said. You guys are just jealous. Naruto replied as he turned to watch the fight. Shino and Kiba stood across from Lee and Niji in training round 7. Shino knew they were going to have a tough time. Unlike Kiba, he also knew how fast Lee was. Niji was from the future, he had no drought, and Niji had trained even more than normal. Just like everyone else who came from the future had. Kiba and Lee slid into Tajutsu stances while Shino readied his bugs. Niji activated his Byakugan before sliding into the gentle fist Tajutsu stance. In a split second Lee was charging towards Kiba and Niji wasn't far behind him. Kiba blocked Lee's first punch but barely could keep up with Lee's speed. Shino jumped back and sent out millions of bugs from his coat sleeves. Niji katened through the bugs, killing a lot of them as soon as they made contact with his chakra barrier. Niji knew how most of Shino's techniques worked, just like how Shino knew his. The only thing Shino could think of was to surprise Niji with the few earth element he knew. Kiba was starting to have a really hard time keeping up with Lee. Akimaru, who was transformed as him, would attack Lee on one side, while he attacked from another direction. It worked at first, but Lee was just faster. Hang over Fang Kiba shouted, as he and Akimaru began to spin at a fast speed towards Lee. Lee tried to jump away from the attack. He didn't get away fast enough and was grazed in the side. That should have slowed him down. Kiba thought as he and Akimaru stood across from Lee. Shino noticed that Niji's movements began to slow down a little. So his bugs had finally started taking effect on Niji's chakra reserves. Guess it was time to use some new tricks. Niji headed for Shino, his gentle fist style was for close distances, and Shino knew that, that is why Shino was keeping his distance. Shino suddenly slammed his hands to the ground, and Niji's eyes widened in surprise. Earth release. Earth pillar prison two voices shouted in unison. Both Shino and Kiba had shouted out the Jutsu's name. Niji hadn't been paying any attention to Kiba and Lee's part in the fight. So they both knew that dot. All of a sudden tons of earth pillars circled around Niji, and he noticed that there were a few earth pillars appearing in Lee's way. That's it, I am tired of this Niji said, as he used Katen to break through the pillars surrounding him. Wow. How youthful the two of you are Lee shouted. I was not expecting that at all. Kiba was breathing hard, next to a painting Akimaru. Kiba was running out of chakra. He had forgotten that he took a lot of chakra. It also didn't help that Kiba's chakra control wasn't very good either. Shino wasn't faring much better than Kiba. A good portion of his bugs had died. He didn't have as many bugs as he did in the future. Kiba, I think it is wise for us to forfeit. Shino said a few minutes later. Yeah, I don't think I could go much longer. Kiba replied. Is that okay with you too? Kiba asked the male members of Team Guy. Sure, you guys had a good fight though. Maybe next time. Niji acknowledged. Naruto tells me that every time I lose. Kiba responded. Yosh. Our spar was very youthful. We should fight again soon. So that way we can all show our flames of youth, Lee shouted. Surely Kiba replied with a chuckle. The four of them turned to the others on the sidelines. That was awesome, I can't wait until Sasuke and I fight you, Naruto exclaimed. Troublesome, how do you know you two will win? Shikamaru asked. That's easy, Naruto has enough chakra to fill every single one of us, and then still be ready to go. Then add me, we're both quite a team when we want to be. Sasuke replied. You're acting like a nice Acheha. Someone got some sense beaten into them by a certain blonde ninja. Niji stated. Shut up, it happened to you too, Sasuke grumbled. What the heck are you guys talking about? Ino asked. Yeah, are you talking about Ino or Naruto? Tenten added. Naruto was about to interrupt when a voice stopped him. Hey kid, what's going on? Karama's voice asked. We're just sparing with each other. Nothing big right now. Oh, Shikamaru, Niji and Shino were the three that came back with us. I know kid, I can see you through your eyes and memories remember. Then why did you ask me what was going on? Naruto asked. Just for my personal enjoyment, I don't always look through your memories. I was asleep earlier. Well I am going to be fighting next, but I think Sasuke and I can take down Shikamaru and Choji. 
Shikamaru will probably get lazy and want to forfeit, so he doesn't have to fight again. That sounds about right, well you probably should be paying attention, you're spacing out. Your friends have been calling you for 2 minutes now. Oh crap, thanks a lot Kurama, I will chat with you, later. Naruto said before going back to paying attention to the others. Hey Naruto, Naruto Kiba called out to him. What? Why are you all staring at me Naruto asked when he noticed everyone was watching him. You zoned out and didn't talk for 5 whole minutes. Sakura replied. Oh, well sorry I was thinking about something. Naruto answered as he rubbed the back of his head. Does it hurt Kiba jokes? You know it kind of did, I had to think about all the things I have to help you with. Naruto explained. Can we just start our spar now? Choji interrupted. Of course, Choji, I am ready whenever the rest of you are. Naruto replied. What a drag, let's get this over with. Shikamaru mumbled as he walked towards the middle of the training ground with Choji right behind him. Come on, team. We have to kick their butts before we can fight Niji and Lee. Naruto told his teammate. Sasuke didn't answer Naruto as he too walked towards the middle of the training grounds. Naruto and Sasuke now stood across from Shikamaru and Choji. Shikamaru and Choji were used to working together. Sasuke and Naruto were going to have to be careful. After all Shikamaru was a genius, he was probably already on his 20th strategy. The battle started as soon as both Sasuke and Naruto noticed Shikamaru's shadow stretch towards them. They both jumped apart and away from the shadows that were chasing them. Naruto jumped away just as Choji came rolling towards him at a high speed. Crap, Shikamaru's trying to distract us. Naruto mumbled as he moved out of the way once more. Shadow clone Naruto yelled as 20 Narutos appeared into existence. All of the clones ran towards Choji who had stopped rolling. Sasuke was in a small tajutsu match with Shikamaru. If Sasuke kept Nara from using hand signs then he couldn't trap him in the shadows. Troublesome, I knew this battle would end up like this. Shikamaru grumbled as he blocked another kick from Sasuke. Shikamaru jumped away from Sasuke, only to be attacked by a few Naruto clones that were attacking from behind. Wind style. Great breakthrough. Naruto called out the jutsu's name. The high gust of wind pushed Choji back and into Shikamaru who had just finished off a few clones. Shikamaru and Choji got out quickly. Choji began to do hand signs. Partial expansion jutsu Choji's arm stretched out towards Sasuke and Naruto. Sasuke hurried through hand signs as Naruto began to do the same. Higher style. Great fireball jutsu. Wind style. Great breakthrough jutsu. The fire and wind combination burst into life, soaring towards Choji's stretched out hands. As soon as Choji eyed it coming, he brought his arms back and jumped away with Shikamaru. The attack soon dissipated, leaving a huge scorched mark on the ground. I am glad we jumped away from that, things would have gotten troublesome. Shikamaru said. Sasuke and Naruto ran at them a few seconds later, starting a tojutsu match again. All four of them exchanged blows with one another. It was 10 minutes later that Shikamaru spoke up, he was getting tired of this. Okay, we're forfeiting, I don't want to keep fighting the two of you. Choji and I obviously won't win. It is easy to tell that the two of you are holding back. Shikamaru said. I also don't want to fight with Niji and Lee. Yeah, I am okay with forfeiting, I am getting really tired. Choji added. Naruto shrugged, okay I guess, I figured you would end up forfeiting anyways. Sasuke nodded in agreement. He was looking forward to fighting with Niji and Lee. The four of them walked back over to the edge of the training grounds. I can't believe you guys give up. You could have tried harder. Ino yelled at Shikamaru and Choji. Ino, you weren't even out there. Do you think you could have won if you fought Naruto and Sasuke? Shikamaru asked. I guess not. Ino replied as she blushed in embarrassment. Wow, so youthful. Our spar will be joyous, Lee exclaimed. Lee, calm down. We can't start right away, we are going to take a break. Naruto said. Okay, Lee agreed. The group all sat together, talking about training and missions, when all four of their senseis appeared. Akashi sensei, what are you guys doing here Sakura asked. Well, we have heard that you guys have been training together on Sundays. Kakashi replied. You guys do check on us, sometimes when we get together. Well not guy, until today. Naruto stated. You knew we were watching you Kurinai asked, surprised that they were spotted. Of course we did, you guys don't really hide your chakra. Sasuke explained. So what were yo you guys going to do? To say Hinata questioned. We wanted to test you guys, as a group. Asuma answered. As a group, what do you mean? Tenten asked. In one week, all 12 of us are going to fight the four of us. We are going to test how well you guys fight as a group. The third Hokage is quite interested in this. Kakashi explained. That's new, I haven't ever heard about this. Niji responded. So we were being tested to see how well the 12 of us work as a team, Shikamaru asked. Exactly, he hasn't said anything about what happens if you do well. Though, I don't think all 12 of you can work as a team, it's never been heard of before. Kakashi explained. 
I think you are wrong Kakashi, I bet the 12 of us can work well together. We might all even surprise you a little. We are a lot stronger than you think. Naruto said determined. I will see it when I believe it. So we will let you have one week to prepare. No missions until then. We will leave all of you alone and let you work out a strategy. Asuma added. It sounds like a youthful idea Lee shouted. Yes, Lee let your flames of youth soar guy shouted back. Thank you guy sensei, if we cannot test our limits, then I will do 1000 push UPS and run 1000 lamps around Konoha. That is so youthful of you Lee guy shouted back. Thank you guy sensei. Lee. I sensei. Lee. I sensei. Oh my god, please tell me I am not watching this. Ino commented. Oh you are Sakura replied. The sunset background began to show behind the hugging student and sensei. Look away, hurry. Niji told the others. You will be caught in it. Everyone looked away from them just in time. They finally separated a minute later. Now, since that's over. We will see all of you in a week. Kakashi said, just before he disappeared in a puff of smoke. The other sensei is nodding goodbye and they too left the training grounds. Well that was interesting. Shino spoke up first. This sounds like a troublesome situation. Shikamaru added. So we have the whole week off to train for this, this should be easy. Kiba said. No, it isn't. They are elite. We are just genin. Tenten replied. Especially Kakashi and Guy, they are rumored to be the strongest in Konoha. Oh. Well, all we have to do is work together. Kiba reasoned. Kiba, all 12 of us have a lot to work around. The four of them have an easier chance. Shikamaru explained. Let's work on a plan then, we need someone to lead the group. That person has to know how everyone works, and can't let it go to their head. Sasuke suggested. That's a good idea, but who? Tenten, Lee and I haven't worked with any of you, so if we go by your rules. All three of us are out. Niji replied. Shikamaru is really smart, maybe he should do it. Joji offered. Shikamaru isn't a bad idea. Shino acknowledged. Yeah, but I have someone better in mind. I may be smart, but I know one person who can think of a plan in the middle of a battle in seconds. Shikamaru replied. Uhinata asked everyone. Naruto, I think you should lead us. Shikamaru answered. Naruto Ino, Kiba, Tenten, Choji, Lee, and Hinata asked in unison. The others didn't have a problem with it. After all, they were from the future and knew how Naruto was with battles. I guess I could. I have been thinking about it. If we are going to do this, then we are training all week, except for the day before the match. Naruto explained. Everyone is going to work with everyone. That way if they try to split us all up, we can always work together with anyone in the group. I believe there is more to this fight than we actually know. Wow, that's actually a good idea. What did you think of it? Kiba asked. Well, it's a good strategy, we have to take them by surprise. Especially if we want to at least last more than an hour fighting them off. We don't know if they will start easy and be holding back. There is no way they would go all out just for a test though. Niji and Tenten, I think it is a good idea if we find out your elements. Naruto explained. This is weird, Naruto's whole demeanor changed in an instant. I have never seen him like this. Ino whispered to Sakura. It happens when he is in charge of a mission. Get used to it, I think he might be leading more often. I figured you would have known this by now, considering all the get togethers Sakura replied to her blonde friend. Naruto pulled out a few chakra papers and handed them to Niji and Tenten. Sorry, Lee, I know you can't use chakra. Though I know you will get stronger with your tojutsu while the others practice their elements. I will even spar with you, if you want. Naruto told the miniature guy clone. It's okay, Naruto san. I do not mind, I will be glad to spar with you. Lee replied. Naruto nodded and turned to Niji and Tenten who were testing their element. Niji's was sliced in half, and Tenten's paper was wrinkled up. Wow, I was not expecting that. Naruto replied. Now I am not the only wind user out of the group. Naruto pulled out a few scrolls from hidden pockets in his jacket. He handed them to Niji. Sasuke did the same as Naruto, but handed the scrolls he had to Tenten. Okay, well I guess our spar will have to be another day. We have to be prepared for this match. I am going to try to see if I can find more about it. So we all should probably get going home for the night. Tomorrow we all can meet up here at 8 for training. Naruto explained to everyone. Alright, we will be here tomorrow then. Kiba agreed. I have to clean the kennels for my mom anyways. With that Kiba left with Akumara right behind him. After Kiba left, everyone else started leaving the training grounds. All hoping they will get strong enough to team up against them. Naruto was the last one to leave the training grounds, heading towards the Hokage's office. He needed to figure out what was going on. This never happened the first time. Though the first time, none of them actually trained together like they were doing now. Naruto knocked at the Hokage's office door, he needed answers. The third is one of the few people who could actually give him the answers he needed. Hum and here is in Saratobi's voice called from the other side. 
Naruto opened the door with a foxy grin. Hey Jai, how have you been Naruto asked. I am doing well, thank you for asking, and how are you Naruto Kun the third asked the short blonde boy. I am doing great Jai, I have been training a lot. Soon I will be able to get that awesome pointy hat of yours off your hands. Hiruzen chuckled, maybe so Naruto, but what are you actually here for? Of course he would figure it out, he is the dot Naruto thought as he rubbed the back of his head. Well you see Jai, I have been inviting all of my friends to train together on Sundays. We always have a fun time. Naruto began. A third nodded at Naruto to go on. The day our sensei showed up out of the blue. They told us that you wanted to test how good of teamwork we all had together. I just don't understand. I have never heard of a group that fights together in one team. Naruto explained. Tsuritobi cleared his throat, he should have seen this coming. After all he was having his own concerns about Naruto. I understand your confusion Naruto, you see your sensei didn't know why all of you were training together one day a week. Today you even had guys team come along. It was just uncommon. All four top genin teams of Konoha were training together. The third replied. Cut the crap Jai, that's not it at all. You are just trying to distract me. If you tell me what is really going on. Naruto gulped, the others were probably going to kill him later. Then I will share some top secret information of my own. Naruto responded. The third's eyebrow rose in interest, what could Naruto actually know, that was top secret. Siratobi wondered. All right Naruto, I will tell you. You probably want those Anbu gone, and the privacy sealed up, then Naruto replied before the third could start explaining anything. Pirazin inflict his wrist, signaling the hidden Anbu to leave the room. Once the Anbu were gone, the third made a hand sign to activate the privacy seals. It seems we have a lot to talk about Naruto. The Hokage said as he looked the boy over. We sure do Jai, it might take a while. Naruto replied as leaned against the wall. This would definitely take a while. One week later. The Kanoha 12 all stood in training ground 7. All of them were waiting for their sensei to show up. The 12 of them had trained all week. Sure they didn't make a huge improvement, it had only been a week. Every single one of them could work with anyone on the team. Though it was quite obvious who worked better together. Alright guys, today is the day we fight together against our senseis. They will probably not go all out in less time than we make them. They will probably underestimate us at first. Do not let that affect you, with all of us working together, we all should do fine. Naruto explained to the others. We can definitely do it Kiba shouted, we all trained for this Akimaru barked in agreement with his partner. This day will be youthful. If we do not win then I will do 1000 push-ups, and then I will climb up and down the monument with boulders strapped to my back. Lee exclaimed. Did you ever figure out why they wanted to test the 12 of us as a team Sasuke turned to Naruto. I did find out why, and it's actually not a bad reason. We have been training all week, so I forgot to tell you. After our spar, I will tell all of you. Naruto replied. Everyone nodded in understanding. They were all ready for this test of teamwork. Their group had gone over a few strategies for their fight. Which strategy are we using for this Hanada asked shyly. She didn't have any shudders, though she still spoke quietly. Well I have to say our best bet is to take them out one by one. Have a few of us distract the other, while the rest take on sensei at a time, until there is only one left. They will probably be using their own teamwork as well. Shikamaru answered. I think I and Kakashi are going to be our toughest opponents, and I would say Kurenai is the weakest out of the four of them. Since most of us are more combat-styled fighters, we can overpower her. Nichi added. That's true, so who should be the ones that distracts Choji asked. Our best bet is to have Naruto as a detractor, he can make tons of clones. Shino commented. The others agreed, even Naruto. Okay and who else? We can't have all of our heavy hitters as distractors, but the distractors have to be strong enough to keep the other three distracted. Tenton said. Why don't we trade out with one another Sakura suggested. Good idea Sakura. Ina replied. Okay, here is how we are going to do it. Shikamaru began as he wrote in the dirt, so that everyone would understand. It was an hour later when their senseis showed up, but they weren't alone. A few other shinobi must have heard about this test. Naruto recognized each of them. Anko, Genma, Izumo, Kitetsu, and even Aruka were there. A few seconds later the third appeared in the training grounds. What's the big deal, why are there more of you? We aren't fighting all of you are we? That's a little much don't you think? Jai, you never said anything about there being others in this test. Naruto said. We are just here to watch, Dot Anko replied before anyone else could. There is a bet going around for this. Kitetsu added. The odds are that the twelve of you won't last an hour. Izumo responded. Aruka here is the only one who bet against it. He thinks the twelve of you will win. Gemma said chewing as he chewed on his dot. Thanks for believing in us Aruka-sensei, we will make you proud. Naruto replied. Yeah, the twelve of us are better than all of you think. Sasuke bragged. Don't think just because we are genin that we will lose. 
It's 12 versus 4, even if they are. Nichi stated. Let's just do this already. Eno interrupted. The crowd that came to watch walked to the edge of the training grounds along with the Hokage. Are the 12 of you ready for this? Kurinai asked. We were born ready, Kiba shouted. We won't give up, Hinata added. All 12 of them slid into different Tajutsu stances almost simultaneously. The four slid into their own stances. Phase 1. As Naruto said, before making a thousand shadow clones, all of them started towards all four at once, as soon as they appeared. The shadow clones covered the 12 genin. Wow, that's amazing. To be able to make that many shadow clones and still be able to move. Genma commented on the sidelines. The other four other shinobi nodded in agreement. They chuckled, this was certainly going to be a good match. The four made quick work with the shadow clones. The clones were soon all dispelled. The moment the last one disappeared was when the genin made their move. Naruto and Sasuke headed towards Asuma, for now they needed to distract him, so that he couldn't go help Kurinai. Niji and Kiba ran towards Gai, they were in charge of distracting him, while the rest fought off Kurinai. One by one they would go down. Denton and Hinata headed towards Kakashi, all they had to do was distract him. The two of them worked together well, because they could easily combine their attacks. Kurinai was immediately attacked by Lee who charged at her. He was fast, she could barely keep up with him. Kurinai moved away from him as fast as she could. Once she was far enough away Kurinai started to do hand signs to cast a low level on the six genin that were attacking her. Just as it was working, it was dispelled by Sakura, who came running towards her with her fist raised high, once she dispelled Kurinai's dot Kurinai went to block Sakura's attack with her own hand. As soon as Sakura's fist met her hand, pain shot up Kurinai's arm. Where the heck did she learn to punch like that? I feel like I am fighting with Tsunade of the Sanin. dot Kurinai thought. Kurinai jumped away from Sakura when the girl went to punch her again. When she landed she felt herself freeze. Shikamaru Kurinai thought. Bugs began to swarm her person, all of them draining her chakra. The bugs retreated after a few moments. She was still caught in Shikamaru's shadow. Ino called out to Kurinai. I would give up if I were you. Choji will charge at you as soon as I take over your mind. Ino's hands were holding her mind. Kurinai sighed, she knew she couldn't win. 6 verse 1. She had also underestimated them at first. Alright, I give. Kurinai replied with a sigh. Sakura walked over to her and knocked Kurinai out with a hit to the neck. They had to, in case it was a trick. Meanwhile with Naruto and Sasuke. Naruto and Sasuke were doing pretty well against Asuma. They were definitely distracting him. So far they had only fought him with Tajutsu and a few kunai and shuriken. Both Naruto and Sasuke must have surprised him with how well they worked together. Asuma had started to have a hard time at first. Sasuke combination 2 Naruto called to him. Sasuke nodded his head and began doing hand signs along with Naruto. Water style. Water shock wave water began to appear out of thin air and head towards Asuma's direction. Lightning release. Electromagnetic murder. A wave of electricity flowed out of Sasuke's hands and combined with Naruto's water. Asuma's eyes widened, where the hell did they learn that? I better move. Who knows what it would do to me. Asuma quickly sunshine away from the combination attack. They hit a group of trees that were behind Asuma before he sunshined. It knocked down three of them before it stopped. Meanwhile with Hinata and Tenten. Hinata and Tenten were not doing as well as the others. Kakashi was a lot faster and knew to stay clear of Hinata. Tenten's weapon scrolls were helping a lot though. Tenten had been adding her lightning affinity into her weapons. That shocked Kakashi the first few times it happened, though since Kakashi had a lightning affinity as well. He was easily figuring out ways to counter it. Hinata would shoot different water release techniques at him when Tenten distracted him. Though since Hinata only knew D-ranked ones and one C-ranked. It didn't slow Kakashi down that much. Denton hoped that they would be switching around soon, or otherwise the two of them were going to be out of the match. With Kiba and Niji. Kiba and Niji had been fending off with Guy's fast movements for 10 minutes now. So far they had a few lucky hits, but it wasn't slowing him down much. They couldn't even use a combination right now, Guy was just moving too fast. At least one of them wasn't taking it too easy on them. Niji, do you think we will be switching soon? Kiba asked him as they jumped away from Guy. I think so, I wish we gotta fight Asuma or Kakashi though. I really wanted to try a few element attacks. Niji replied. We aren't done yet, Niji, we haven't made it to phase 2 yet. Kiba replied. Phase 2 Ino yelled a few seconds later. See what I mean, Niji. Kiba replied with a grin. Naruto spammed more clones to distract the three remaining. The genin quickly regrouped, while Kakashi, Guy, and Asuma dealt with clones. This is so fun, Asuma's kind of tired now. From the looks of all of you, a lot of you are tired too. We can make it, there is only one phase left after this. Naruto said quickly. You all know what to do. Let's do this. Sasuke added. Everyone was ready to take out Asuma. 
It shouldn't take too long, Asuma was already tired, but sadly so were some genin. The clones all disappeared once again. The three noticed that Kurinai was on a mission. They had been so distracted by the other genin that they didn't even notice. Maybe they were going a little overboard with fighting all 12 of them. Don't worry about Kurinai, she was knocked out. She is over here with us. Anko shouted at them when the clones disappeared. You guys are doing pretty well so far. Kakashi commented. I agree, quite surprising. Asuma added. They are so youthful. Their flames of youth are strong, guy shouted. There wasn't any more time wasted talking. Lee, Naruto, and Sakura headed towards Guy this time. Lee was the fastest out of the 12 of them. So they should be able to distract Guy long enough. Sasuke, Niji, and Ino headed for Kakashi. Niji and Sasuke were a good combination as well. They could easily keep Kakashi distracted and maybe even make him use his Sharingan. Ino's water release could combine with Niji's wind, making the water become stronger. Ino's water worked well with both Niji and Sasuke. Shikamaru, Choji, Kiba, Hinata, Tenten and Shino faced off against Asuma. Now they wouldn't be underestimating any of them. I see how you took down Kurinai, you overpowered her in numbers. Asuma commented as he watched all of them. He would have to be careful. Choji came rolling towards him at a fast speed, a few minutes later. Choji was way faster now. Asuma barely got out of the way in time. Just as he landed Kiba and Tenten engaged him into Jutsu. Asuma noticed that the two of them fought around each other easily. Who knew they could team up so well, with only a week of practice. All of a sudden the two of them jumped back, and he realized why when he felt the chakra presence of Hinata. She started to strike at him, using a gentle fist sort of style. Though I was surprised that she was using it somewhat differently. Asuma blocked her as much as he could. She hit a few of his dot Asuma jumped away from her and started doing hand signs. Wind release. Great breakthrough. Asuma called out. Dot, the high powered wind shot towards the genin. Fire style. Great fireball. Jutsu Shikamaru's voice rang out, shooting out a fireball towards Asuma. The two clashed and blew up when the Jutsus met. When did he learn that? I didn't even know Shikamaru's chakra nature was fire. Asuma thought. Shino, do you still have those few bugs on him? Shikamaru asked. Yes, his chakra should be depleting. Shino replied. Shikamaru nodded his head in acknowledgement and listened for Asuma. A few seconds later, a fire was sent at them from the smoke. They all dodged out of the way, just in time. The smoke cleared to show Asuma again. As soon as they could see him, Kiba, Choji and Shikamaru engaged him in another Tujutsu match. This fight was beginning to make them all tired. They had all been fighting for over a half hour now. Move Hinata began to do hand signs. Water style. Water fang bullet. Hinata's water soared through the air and towards Asuma. Kiba, Shikamaru and Choji jumped out of the way, just as Hinata's was close enough. Asuma didn't get out of the way fast enough and was pushed into a tree by the water. Asuma painted, they were really making him work. He couldn't go all out on them, this was only a test. His chakra was depleting too, because of Shino's bugs and the few he had used so far. Alright, I give up. I say you pass, but you still have to fight with Gai and Kakashi. They are still going strong. Asuma said. Shikamaru attacked his shadow to Asuma and had him walk all the way to the other shinobi that were watching the fight. They are some genin, aren't they? Kurinai asked him. Yeah, but the battle shouldn't last much longer. Most of them are tired by now. Even though Naruto is known to have a lot of chakra, he must be running low soon. I don't know about that. Naruto has more chakra than Kakashi. The third commented. You are all going to lose now, it has been almost an hour. Aruka spoke up. Curses flew out of many mouths. Who knew this generation was this strong? Katetsu commented. This year's exams should be interesting. Izumo replied. With Naruto, Sakura, and Lee. With the combination of the three of them, they were giving Guy a hard time. Lee was fast as it is, and Naruto wasn't that much slower. Guy learned that Sakura can punch like Tsunade. So dodging her was a good thing. This is such a youthful match. I am so proud of everyone's flames of youth. Guy shouted as blocked and attacked back. Thank you, Guy sensei. Your flames of youth are also glowing brightly, Lee exclaimed. Why thank you, Lee. Guy replied. But Sasuke, Niji, and Ino. Bakashi couldn't believe this, he was really tempted to use his Sharingan. The three of them knew how to combine their elements together. I don't even understand how good their teamwork is. Niji and Sasuke both are actually working together. This just doesn't add up. In one week, they all get this good in teamwork. Kakashi thought as he jumped away from Niji, who was about to strike him. Just as Kakashi landed he had to dodge a combination of water and lightning techniques from Sasuke and Ino. This was just crazy, who came up with this idea again. Oh right, the third dot Kakashi thought. The genin are really taking this match seriously, too. As soon as Aokiba shouted to the others. Page Bunch and Naruto cried out a few seconds later. This time there were only about 100 clones. 
The Gen and all met up together once more. Naruto could easily tell that most of them were exhausted at this point. The Kashi and Guy easily beat all the clones, once they all dispelled Naruto called for a timeout. Everyone was confused, even the Genin. Why was Naruto calling a timeout? Sakura, I want you to take Ino, Kiba, Hinata, Choji and Tenten out. All of you look tired. I will not let any of you continue. We have been fighting for over two hours now. This isn't a real life situation, so it will be okay. Naruto explained. But Naruto I can still fight. Kiba replied. Akumaru barked in agreement, even though Akumaru was clearly tired. I know you can Kiba, but you won't be able to long. I don't want you to get hurt because you are too tired to move. People take advantage of that. Naruto answered. I understand that you are concerned, but we will be fine. Tenten tried to argue. No, Sakura is going to take out and heal any wounds you have so far. All of you made me lead, so I am asking you to do it. Naruto replied. You were doing that thing again. Choji commented. Well, I am sorry. Kurinai and Asuma are out too, so it's not like the rest of us are fighting off all four of them. Okay, Naruto we will go. Ino spoke up. Good, we will see how far we can go with this fight. Naruto grinned. The Kashi rubbed his eyes, he swore he had just seen his sensei. Naruto also sounded so much older, like he knew what it was like to lose those you love. Wow, that kid sure knows how to lead a group. I swear he looked so much older just a second ago. Anko commented. Yes, I have noticed that he does it quite often. Ever since last week they have all been in the academy. Every time I talk to him, he gets this weird look in his eyes, like he has already seen what war is like. Dadaruka, explained as half of the genin, made their way over to them. Naruto, Sasuke, Niji, Lee, Shikamaru, and Shino stood in the middle of the training grounds facing Kakashi and Guy. This is quite a combination. Kakashi commented, as he looked over the genin left. It's a really youthful combination. If I say so myself. Guy replied to Kakashi's comment. Who supposed rookie of the year, a genius Nara, a quiet Aburam, and the supposed dead son. What surprised me most is that you have Naruto as the leader. I figured one of you geniuses would have taken that spot. Kakashi analyzed. Naruto has this weird power as we call it. Niji began. It affects almost every single person he meets. Shikamaru added. No matter who you are, he for some reason makes people want to follow him, Shino stated. Sadly, Naruto likes to save anyone who has a sob story. His enemies or even his best friend for almost killing him. Sasuke explained as his eyes grew darker, along with Niji's, Shikamaru's, and Shino's. Hey, quit moping. This is why people like me and Lee are around. Someone has to deal with a lot of you. Can we get to the fight now? No one wants to hear about me and my crazy life. Naruto replied, before everyone here started questioning them. Everyone seemed to brighten up. Naruto sometimes has that effect on others. All six of them slid into tojutsu stances, ready to face Kakashi and Guy. Um, this is quite interesting. Kakashi mumbled before lifting his aid up showing his Sharingan. Troublesome Shikamaru muttered to the others. Kakashi and Guy came to them this time, both trading blows with the six genin. All six of them worked well around each other. They would switch between Kakashi and Guy. Making their moves almost unpredictable, Kakashi was lucky that none of them were faster than him. Shino sent insects towards Kakashi and Guy, hoping to slow them down. Kakashi, who saw them coming, used a small fire to kill them. Naruto created 20 more shadow clones to help distract the two, while the genin jumped back. Shikamaru, Sasuke, Naruto and Niji started familiar hand signs. Wind style. Great breakthrough. Naruto and Niji shouted in unison. Fire style. Great fireball. Shikamaru and Sasuke called out. A huge team of fire raced towards Kakashi and Guy, who just kicked away Lee, Shino and the rest of the clones. Oh shit was all Kakashi said as he and Guy used body replacement to get out of the way. Once the huge fireball dissipated, the genin was breathing hard. Half the training grounds were wrecked. There were pieces of earth missing everywhere. Okay, okay I think we should call it good. All of you pass the test. Kakashi said as he pushed his forehead protector down to cover his Sharingan. Everyone who was at the edge of the training grounds walked over to them. Haruka was grinning the whole way. After all, he had won the bet. That was just crazy, are you all sure your Genin Izumo asked? Yes, we all are. We trained all week for this, in teamwork and a few dot Sasuke replied. I really can't wait until Genma covered Katetsu's mouth. We're not allowed to talk about you know what dot Genma whispered. Sorry, I forgot dot Katetsu replied. Okay, Jai, I think the 12 of us deserve a good rest, so we should have tomorrow, off dot Naruto told them dot. I suppose that would be a good idea. Come speak with me tomorrow sometime Naruto kun the third said, before leaving in a swirl of leaves. The rest of us have duties to do. So we will see all of you around. Gemma said as he grabbed hold of Katetsu and Izumo's shoulders before Shunshin. Great fight Gaki. 
I have a date with some dango. Anko said before leaving as well. I think all of you did well. I was quite worried at first when I found out about the test. I will see you guys soon, I hope. Aruka told them. Thank you, Aruka sensei. The group replied in unison. Aruka left a few minutes later, mumbling about grading and new academy students. The 12 gen in turn to their senseis who hadn't spoken. I am quite surprised how well you all work together. Kurinai spoke first. Your strategy worked really well. I agree, all 12 of you knew how the other worked. Asuma commented. It normally takes years for teamwork like that. So, I do think Naruto is right. All of you need some rest, I am surprised you are not dropping to the floor, Naruto. Kakashi said. Naruto rubbed the back of his head. I have a little chakra left, I should be okay until I get home to sleep like a log. All of you are so youthful, your flames of youth just burst out of you. Guy cried out. Thank you, Sensei Lee replied with a thumb up and a grin. But that the Sensei disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Once they were gone, Naruto turned to the others. I will explain the test tomorrow, I am super tired right now. The rest of you don't look any better. Naruto explained. Okay, you want me up around 2, Sakura asked. That sounds like a good time, it would be after lunch, and we could sleep and Dot Kiba replied. Everyone agreed to meet the next day. Naruto walked into the training grounds the next morning. Everyone was already there waiting for him. They must really want to know why Hokage Jai wanted to test us. Naruto thought as he stopped in front of the group who were all gathered together under a tree. What took you so long? Ino asked. Yeah, we have been here for hours. Kiba added, followed by a bark from Akimaru. Kiba, we have only been here for 10 minutes. Shikamaru replied with a yawn. Well, it felt like forever, Kiba replied. So, Don, are you going to tell us what the third told you about our test or what Sasuke asked? Everyone turned to Naruto, they all wanted to know why. Yes, team, I am going to tell all of you, it was quite surprising. It hasn't ever happened before. Naruto began. Okay, tell us, Lee exclaimed. The third wanted to test our teamwork because there is a war coming. He explained it all to me once I exchanged some info I had. Hokage Jai heard from sources that Orochimaru, one of the Sanin, was planning to attack during the Chunin exams that are being held in four months. Naruto explained. So he wants to strengthen all the Gen and Tenten questioned. Yes, Jai thinks that Orochimaru will have spies in the exam. So this year the 12 of us are for sure being entered into the exams. Our test of teamwork was designed so that we all can work together during the exams. For some reason we really caught the Hokage's eye. Naruto replied. This should be interesting. Niji commented. Alright. We will be before we know it. Ino shouted. It sounds troublesome. Shikamaru mumbled. I wasn't expecting them to rely on us that much. Sakura said. Everyone began to add in their own thoughts, the volume level began to grow louder. What information did you exchange with him? Shino asked suddenly. Everyone stopped talking in an instant and turned to Naruto once again. Oh uh, I may have told him how strong I really was. I told him that I stole more than just one out of the Forbidden Scroll. I even told him it was my idea to start this group training. Naruto explained. Everyone nodded and accepted his answer. The five of them will probably want to meet later to talk more. Naruto thought. So the next four months we should all train as hard as we can. If this war with Orochimaru is as bad as they say, then we all need to be strong. So that we can protect the village Sakura said. We will be the strongest group of ninja the world has ever seen Kiba replied. Yash, our flames of youth continues to grow even stronger Lee shouted. So since this meeting of sorts is over, I am going to go enjoy the rest of my day, off. Tenten said a few minutes later. That sounds like a good idea, I am going to leave too. Ino replied, as she headed towards the exit of the training grounds. It didn't take very long for everyone else to start leaving the training grounds as well. Everyone wanted to enjoy the rest of their day off, most of them knew that life would start to get busier around the start of the Chunin exams. We are going to have to meet up later to talk about the plan for the exams. Shikamaru said as he was getting up to leave. We will plan a day just for that, we want to be prepared. There is a lot to do, and there is only so much we can do until then. Sasuke replied. Sounds like a good idea. Nichi said. Your mission to wave is coming soon, is it not? Shino asked. Yes, we should be going on it soon. We were gone for about a month last time. So the three of you will have to make sure the others train hard. Sakura replied. We can take care of it just fine. Niji answered. Troublesome, we are going to have to really push the rest of them. Luckily everyone is stronger than we were during our first tune in exams. Shikamaru explained. Great, we're counting on that. I don't want to be worried about everyone being in danger. It really helps that the three of you are from the future too. Naruto replied. Of course, we are always here to help. Shino stated, as everyone else nodded in agreement. See you later. Naruto said before disappearing in a swirl of leaves. The others soon followed suit so that they could enjoy the rest of their day off. 
A few days later. Fox in position A Naruto called through headset. Wolf in position B Sasuke's voice said calmly. Rabbit in position C Sakura's voice called out a few seconds later. Get ready to capture the subject. A fourth voice called to them. Go. The three of them rushed from their hiding spots before capturing their target. Red bow on the ear Kakashi asked a few seconds later. Yes, it's Tora. Sakura replied as she watched Tora try to struggle out of Naruto's arms. Good, let's go to the Hokage Tower. Kakashi said. Team 7 stood in front of the Hokage and Aruka as they watched Tora get squished in its owner's arms. The lady paid them for their mission before leaving the room. This is it. This is when we go to the waves. Naruto thought as the Hokage read off a list of missions they could do next. No way, I don't think so Jai, we want a better mission. Team 7 can handle it, well. Naruto said as soon as the third finished reading off the missions. Naruto. Haruka shouted. I know the three of you are strong, but you are Genin. Genin doesn't do any higher ranked missions. Lie, we went on tons of higher ranked missions as Genin Sasuke, Sakura and Naruto thought. Haruka continued to explain about mission ranking and who does what missions. When he was done explaining, he found that none of them were listening. Do you think your team can really handle Naruto Kun Hirazan asked. Of course we can, besides don't you know, this year's Genin is going to surpass all the generations from before Naruto replied determinedly. The third Hokage sighed, Kakashi do you think they are ready? Kakashi looked up from his book. I think they are. They have surprised me with their strength so far. I think a C-ranked mission will be a good challenge for them. Alright, then I have just the mission for you. Hirazan replied. Yeah Naruto cheered, they were finally getting their mission to wave. Sent to Zuna and Dot the third said. An old man, who was holding a big bottle of sake walked in. These brats are supposed to protect me while I build my bridge. They don't look like much. Especially that short blonde one. Azuna said, pointing to Naruto. I have you know, I won't always be this short. I am a lot stronger than I look. You can believe what you want. Naruto replied. The other adults in the room were very shocked by the blonde's answer. They thought Naruto would try to attack him. Azuna you shouldn't worry, my genin is really strong, and I am a dot Kakashi explained to the bridge builder before turning to his students. The at the bridge in one hour dot Kakashi said before disappearing in a puff of smoke. One hour later. The genin of team 7 stood in front of the gate with Tazuna, waiting for Kakashi. The others know we are leaving right Sakura asked. Yeah, I ran into Shikamaru on my way here. He will tell the others dot Sasuke replied. So what is the plan Sakura asked, turning to Naruto who looked like he was deep in thought. Naruto blinked a few times before answering them. The demon brothers won't take long to beat. Zabuza on the other hand is a different story. I say we take him out fast. We can capture him and Haku. I can distract Kakashi with shadow clones. I will send shadow clones with Sakura to take out Haku, while Sasuke and I take out Zabuza. Naruto explained. They both nodded, sounds like a good plan, we can work with that for now. Sasuke replied. Kakashi appeared in front of them a few minutes later, ready to go. The three genin didn't say a word this time, they were too busy thinking over the plan. Let's head out Kakashi said, as he began to walk out of the gates with the genin following not far behind. Kakashi was surprised, all three of his genin were quietly talking to each other. Naruto was taking points, but he would walk backwards when he would answer Sasuke or Sakura. Sakura and Sasuke were walking on the right and left of Tizuna. Had they done this before? They made it seem like this was an everyday thing. Kakashi thought as he observed his students. Azuna didn't know what to do with this team. They were a lot quieter than he thought they were at first. They didn't even ask him any questions, at least not yet. They were walking down the same road a few hours later when Naruto finally spotted the puddle up ahead. He could sense the two easily. Naruto signaled Sasuke and Sakura a few seconds later. Naruto already knew Kakashi was aware of the puddle. As soon as they passed the puddle, the demon brothers attacked. One down they said in unison as they pulled the chain around Kakashi and split him into pieces. The three genin were already a step ahead. Sakura took a stance in front of Tizuna, in case one of the demon brothers got past Naruto or Sasuke. Naruto and Sasuke raced towards the demon brothers at a fast speed, a speed that the two demon brothers could barely see. Sasuke threw a kunai at the chain to pin it against the tree, before the demon brothers couldn't even begin to attack them. It wasn't long for Sasuke and Naruto to knock them both out and tie them up against a tree. You can come out now, Kakashi sensei Sakura called out once the demon brothers were tied up. Kakashi appeared a second later. Good work team. So Tazuna I believe you also answers. Tazuna then began to explain everything. About Gato, about the bridge and about how poor Wave was. Well this was raised to a B-ranked mission. If there is anyone any stronger it will be an A-ranked. We are going to dot Kakashi was cut off by Naruto. I don't think so, Kakashi. We are going on this mission. 
We are strong enough, I want to help wave. What kind of ninja are we if we go back now? What will people start saying about our village? I am not going back either. Sasuke replied, crossing his arms. I am in too, we're not backing down. Sakura agreed. Bakashi sighed, alright, we will go. We will have to talk about payment later. But that Team 7 was back on the road towards Wave once more. The team and Tazuna had just gotten off the boat that took them across the river. They would be meeting up with Zabuza very soon. Naruto signaled to Sasuke and Sakura a few minutes later when Naruto could sense Abusa and Haku watching them. Page bunch and no dot Naruto suddenly cried out. Many clones appeared everywhere. Kakashi was very confused, what was going on? Kakashi noticed that both Sasuke and Sakura had disappeared, and he wasn't sure if the real Naruto was around. Azuna drew back towards Kakashi. What's going on? Are we being attacked? Azuna asked Kakashi. There were too many Naruto clones blocking his view. Not anymore Sasuke's voice called out. All of the Naruto clones all burst into smoke, disappearing. The smoke cleared out of the air, revealing his genin team. What surprised Kakashi most was that Zabuza Mamachi and a masked hunter nin were tied together next to them. Sakura was carrying Zabuza's sword, holding it against her shoulder. What the heck is going on Kakashi asked. How could a team of genin take out Zabuza of the seven ninja swordsmen of the mist, and a hunter nin Kakashi thought. Naruto rubbed the back of his head, nervously. Well you see Kakashi sensei, we are stronger than you think, though we did take them by surprise. Naruto explained. They underestimated us too Sasu grumbled. You weren't kidding Kakashi, you genin are really strong. Izuna commented. Kakashi was really having a hard time believing this. Yes, he did know they were stronger than the average genin, but to take out an A-ranked missing nin. What about the hunter nin Kakashi asked. They were working together, when the three of us were fighting Zabuza the hunter nin attacked us. Sakura explained. Zabuza began to groan. What happened? All I remember is being attacked by some short Kanoha brats. Zabuza opened his eyes when he realized that he was tied up. What the hell? Who the heck are you, brat? Zabuza asked the Genin. We're Genin of Kanoha, that's who. Naruto replied with a foxy grin. You're Genin. You sure don't fight like one. Zabuza mumbled. Haku began to stir a second later. Zabuza sama, what happened? We were attacked and captured by Genin. Zabuza growled. He was so pissed right now. Well, I am guessing you were here to kill Tazuna Kakashi asked the missing nin. We were and I still will. Right after I kill your genin. Zabuza replied. Isn't going to pay you. Naruto suddenly interrupted. What do you know, brat Zabuza spat. That's the kind of man Gato is. From Tazuna's story, the guy's nonsense. Sasuke answered. I heard that missing nin jobs require a lot of payment. With a guy that is so greedy like that. Why would he want to pay you? He probably hopes that you will end up dying while fighting us. Naruto replied. Why should I believe you? Zabuza asked. These genin were quite interesting. That's true, why should you? How about we make a deal of sorts? Naruto suggested. What kind of deal? Zabuza asked, slightly interested. Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Where is Naruto going with this? In 10 days, we will all meet on the bridge. If we can beat you guys again, then you have to come back to Kanoha with us. If you win, then you can take the money Gato owes you and leave. Naruto explained. Are you serious? Kakashi and Zabuza asked in unison. Of course, we will let you go. If you try to attack us now, then you won't live. Do we have a deal? Naruto asked. Zabuza sat and thought for a few minutes. All right, Brad, I will agree with your terms. You cannot attack us either. But Zabuza Sama Haku was cut off by Zabuza. Shut up, Haku, I'll make the decisions. Zabuza replied. Sakura handed Zabuza's sword to Naruto, before cutting them loose. Kakashi was about to protest, but Sasuke stopped him. We know what we are doing Kakashi, we will explain it to you when we get to Tazuna's. Sasuke explained. Naruto held Zabuza's sword out to him, once they were untied. Oh, Sakura used a small poison to lower your chakra and slow you down. You probably won't be moving much for a few hours. Naruto explained. Zabuza grumbled as he took his sword from Naruto. A deal's a deal, we meet in 10 days. With that, Zabuza and Haku left the small clearing. Alright, I want an explanation right now, Kakashi growled out as soon as Zabuza was gone. Calm down, Kakashi sensei, we will explain to you later. Right now, we need to get to Tazuna's. Naruto replied. Oh, it will be explained. Kakashi replied as they made their way to Tazuna's house.